Hello, I'm Damien Barrett. Welcome to Access All Areas. A big weekend of football, plenty to talk about. Let's start with the Ds. Matty Lloyd, Jimmy Bartell, they are starting to get rolling. They are, Damo. They've only beaten Essen and also St Kilda the last fortnight, but it's what they're doing and the, the type of players. Brayshaw playing his best game in a long, long time. Oliver's on fire. Petrarca's looking good. Jesse Hogan's in the form of his career, so it's... Those blokes in the brackets of 50 to 100 games, Jimmy, that are starting to really you know, play great football. Yeah, spot on. They were physical yesterday yeah. around the contest. Mm. And you mentioned that midfield depth, but they've also got that experience now mm. across half-back. Jordan Lewis, Bernard Vincent, Michael Hibbert. They just mm. set them up really well. That They look balanced. And Jake Lever's starting to find some touch yeah. back there as well. Lordy, you just mentioned Jesse Hogan mm. in the form of his career. Is he being assisted uh, greatly by the return of the past two weeks of, of Tom McDonald? I think it's a good point, Dame. I think it takes pressure off him because in the past everyone's saying, well, what's the point? of Jesse Hogan having 25 disposals if he's you know, not marking the ball inside 450. He doesn't have to now. You want to keep Jesse Hogan happy. He's that type of player where he can lose his way at times. But he was powerful yesterday, Tom McDonald. Some of these grabs, he could be one of the best contested marks in the game that we've got right now. Yeah, they look really flexible now because you had young Weedman as well. So they yeah. can stretch sides if they want to go three tours forward. He can go back around behind the ball. We've seen him play centre-half back. But he also pinch hits in the ruck for when Big Max has a rest. So that flexibility they've got with him in the side is first class. Damo, the only question mark they have is speed through the midfield. Right. I think aside from that, they've got everything to be a top six side this year. Yeah, okay. Hogan, kicking goals, getting lots of the ball around the ground. He's not going to like, though, the review of his own tape when he sees this with Carlisle hitting him there. And uh, the flopping, the staging, to me, he has to cop a fine for that because the AFL can't be seen to be allowing that to happen. He does before, Damo. I've obviously had my issues with that through my time. But and you're, you're extremely embarrassed. So Jesse Hogan would be embarrassed. In a way, it's great he missed that shot for goal because yep. he didn't deserve to get a shot for goal for it. Yeah, he puts the umpire in a, in a troubling position. So, so you did it? I did it, yeah. yeah. Did yeah, you do I it, Jimmy? Think, I can't oh, uh, probably at some yeah. stage in your yeah. career, you try and milk yeah. a free kick and you're not thinking about it yeah. at, uh, at the time. But the public scrutiny you cop yeah. from it is enough to stop you. And Michael Christian already this year has been wanting to whack players for that. Yeah, another one on the weekend was Scott Thompson. There's an amazing ability, this man, to go limp when he gets contacted in any form. And, and I, look, he's, he's milk free with it. But again, I think when they look back at that, he's not going to like that. And I, I think his teammates won't like it either, will they? Well, I think the thing that annoys, as we said, Michael Christian, with this is if you affect the umpire's decisions, and this is what it does, if you get a free kick out of it, you know, it... Yeah, you're, you're tricking, I guess, the game. The same here and with Alex gets a, a 50 against Brayshaw, who, who does give it to him once the uh, penalty has been awarded. Well, the Hogan one's the easy one. So he gets an automatic fine. I'll be shocked if he doesn't. But these ones, it's whether Michael Christian's going to be bold enough to say to Alex Rance there, even though you got the 50, hmm. you're also going to be fined on the Monday because it shouldn't have been there. Yep. A problem for the Saints, there's many, yeah. but goal kicking is, is probably their biggest issue from, from gettable ranges. Oh, it's just become uh, such a mental problem for them now. This is early in the game. You want to put scoreboard pressure on, you know, build some pressure on Melbourne. Again, second quarter, get within seven or eight points, Jim. But it just happens time and time again. Yeah, there was a couple of shockers on the weekend, and we saw Gresham's. His job is, as a small forward, to convert those half chances. That's why you're in the side. But I often look to where they're taking a lot of their shots. We're seeing these easy ones that they should convert, but they get pushed so wide with their inside 50s, so they're often harder to, to get. But this one here... Oh, this is a shank. That's a real bad one from Marshall there, isn't it? Uh, look, another one of their forwards, uh, Paddy McCartan, finished the game yesterday uh, on the bench after a, a whiplash incident and then a blood sugar level relating to his diabetes. 2018 is just not working out for him. He's played the seven games, kicked only the six goals. He's averaging less than a tackle mm. a game. Uh, the, yeah. the tackling's not good. I think he needs to have a rest, mm. and given they're going to Perth this weekend, I think it's a good time to start that, and just to maybe try and sharpen him up, either having a rest this week and then maybe a couple of weeks in the VFL. And, and So VFL, to achieve what, Damo? What do you, well, what do you want from Well, they're achieving nothing by playing yeah. him mm. in the seniors each week. I, I just haven't seen anything this year that makes mm. us think he's going to be the player that they want him to be. I'd like to see work rate and leading patterns change a bit. Lloyd, mm. you're obviously the expert on this, but it'd be worth a St Kilda coach taking him to a Richmond game uh, behind the goals and watching the likes of Jack Rewalt, right. how they work inside 50. Mm. He's going on these long searching leads at the moment. If it doesn't hit him, he's got to work all the way back at the moment. Just shorten the leads, come across the ground a bit more. I know we've got to move on, but mm. Tom Hawkins is a similar build to him. What has did Tom do in those first two or three years to change the way he played? He spent time and time again working at training. Like I said, short lead. If he doesn't get it, he doubles back. He keeps changing that position. Mm. So the defender on him 
is constantly made to work. He, he didn't go on those long 70-metre leads anymore. He worked, which what was his strength, which was his power. Yep. Since Jordan did go, he's got back into the Collingwood team after the disciplinary issues earlier in the year. He has been outstanding. Five goals yesterday was the difference. Did it uh, at the start of the game, did it late in the game. Very good player. Oh, he's a great player, Damo. And, and he's one player you don't want to see at the end of his career say, what a waste of talent Jordan Dugowie was. And it's great to see him start to play at his best. I thought he was brilliant late last year. He improved Collingwood last year. Mucked up again in the off-season. But let's hope the penny has dropped. And it's just not a week or two here or there he can become a star of the game. Jimmy, you analyse the, the list management space. He's on the open market, effectively. Oh, yeah. What's he now worth? Oh, he's worth a fair bit because he's 22. And as we've seen, a goal-kicking, powerful inside mm. mid. And have a look at this. Yeah. That's just footy smart. Handballed it end over mm. end. He just didn't <laughs> like go into space. He gave, I think it was Stevenson there on the end, every chance to get that ball. But you've got to pay more to get him out of the club. He, he's worth over 500 a year, isn't he? Oh, easily. I would have thought now that he's gettable, if, if he wants to be. Hey, uh, the Dockers allowed Richmond to do what they do so well. That The blueprint for success that we saw late last year and again early this year, they made it easy for the Tigers here, so the Dockers. Just the blueprint of Richmond, and uh, it wasn't just their forward pressure, which we're seeing now. It was also their runoff half back Richmond, when, uh, which was sensational. But uh, the Dockers, we saw what happened with Essendon the week before, with Hawthorne, the day before, sorry, with Hawthorne's pressure, but they just panicked Fremantle. I think you have to hold forwards uh, deep at times just so you've got someone to kick to, but they pushed everyone up and just handballed into the traffic consistently. Yeah, well, each one of these handballs is just shifting the pressure yeah, to the next yeah. one. If you can't find that release kick, you know, one, two handballs, and then that sort of that release valve, that little short kick but to get the forwards back you know, in front of the ball. But you have a look at all these. It's just shifting the pressure here. I don't, Rick, Jimmy was able to play on a side that was just confident, believed in themselves, believed in their game style. And that's what they are at the moment. They are just a team chock full of confidence. I think they've got the best skill level in the game. They've got the best pressure in the game. I think they look fitter than yeah. everyone else. Yeah. I think their last quarters... They just steamroll everyone and they run. It's they can only powerful. beat who they're assigned yeah, to play, right, yeah. but the one team they played from last year's final series is the one game they've lost this year to Adelaide. I still need to see just a little bit more, Lloyd, to, okay. to be absolutely convinced they're the, going to go the back to back. The final series wasn't enough last year. They're probably not at this stage. <laughs> <case. Yeah, laughs> new season. Hey, yeah. Dustin Martin versus uh, Nat yeah. Fife, Brownlow Millis versus Brownlow Medalist. Uh, who won? We oh, know who won, but, but oh. what, what did, what's Dusty doing this year that, that uh, this different to last year? Oh, look, it was tough to do a head-to-head -head on this because Dusty's been spending so much time in the forward half. We see almost the whole entire third quarter this mm. year he plays forward. Fife was so dominant. Mm. I know they got belted, but he was by far and away the best man on the ground yesterday. He was the best, and I reckon Dusty isn't travelling as well as last year. I know we judge him hard. His numbers are still great, but I reckon his ball use, he's being a bit too cute, and I'm not sure he's working as hard across the ground as really? well. Yeah, so I, I, he's a watch at Would the Would that be noticeable to Damien uh, Hardwick? Well, I saw him kick six against Brisbane, and he kicked six, but I thought he, he hardly moved. That was probably the role he played, but since then, he's just getting on the end of other chains. I don't think he's hunting the ball as well. So you can get away with it while you're winning, but I still think that he could get back to what he was last year, which was a harder working player. OK. A lot of teams after the seven rounds on four wins. North Melbourne is one of those teams. A, a really big win, a significant win against the Sydney Swans on the weekend. And, and Mason Wood, who's playing his first game for the year, was crucial to it. Yeah, they made him earn his spot. I think he played three games in the VFL here, but they've always been a massive rap on this guy because of his athleticism, Lloydie, and his kicking ability. And it's how he's now going to fit in when Jared Waite makes their comeback into that side. Well, I think he got a big contract at North because Sydney actually wanted him to play for them because uh, he was just... Uh, a pa this was a dominant display. This is how well he was going. Look at the poise, the power to kick that winning goal. The composure. And, yeah, and like <laughs> I said with the goey demo, I hope he gets the most out of his career. I know he's had injuries and he's been a VFL footballer for a reason. Yep. So let's hope he gets the best out of himself. I don't like using this phrase, but mm. it's amateur hour when it comes to the score review system that the AFL's operating under at the moment. This was from that particular game. This is Billy Hartung having a, a shot at goal touched by McVeigh. Now, Lotto, the... The score review system is independent of the, the host broadcaster, but if we're going to allow the, the right for the goals to be reviewed before the balls bounce down, that had to be reviewed, and it wasn't. Um, we either remove mm. the scope for the review system to take in a situation like this, mm. or we use it. You, you can't have it both yeah. ways. And unfortunately, we're talking about it every week. Yep. I'm not sure why it should have got to this point, but you see Damien Harbick, John Longmire, 
all the coaches, they're just scoffing at it now. If, if we're reviewing, though, yeah. a touch-off-the-boot mm. situation, why don't we review a howler free kick mm. that's played around the ground? I mean, the review system was not brought in mm. for that particular purpose there with Hartung, and yet we allow it to be the case, and then we don't use it every single time we need to. No, you're right. It was for those goal-line decisions, or if it smacked into the goalpost, yeah. so the, Tommy the, top, the Tommy Hawkins yeah. and yeah. uh, Sherrod Wellingham in the 2011 mm. grand final. But if we've got the footage... Use it. use it. Yeah, and yeah. if you choose to use it, use it. Uh, James Sicily, a bit like Jordan Degoe in a way. He causes problems with his own team, but his upside is so huge. And, Lordy, you do a rolling All-Australian. I know he's missed a couple of games with suspension this year. Jimmy, Lordy, should he be in the All-Australian? I've got him in Matty Lloyd's rolling All-Australian <laughs> at the moment. I, what this guy is doing as a defender, it's the modern defender. He intercepts the ball yeah. really well, but it's his kicking. And watching him live, the depth and the penetration on his kicking, and we talk about sides that struggle to get out of their back half. He can pierce opposition uh, defensive zones mm. with, the, uh, with his kicking ability. And right. that, that courage yeah. there too yeah. is another side of his game that he's clearly developed. And I agree 100% with Jim on the kicking side of it. You see a lot of players now, look at this kick for goal, was just brilliant after a 50 metre penalty bit. There's so much handball in the game. He had 23 kicks and six handballs or something like that. And here he is, the arrogance <laughs> of him, uh, the confidence of him, wanting to just make Joey feel even worse on a Saturday afternoon at the G. Bombers are uh, having a season mm. to forget right now. They can't figure in the in the uh, finals, mm. can they now, after two and five start? Well, I think the frustration for a lot of people in the footy world is they've got ability there. Uh, we see other young sides and we can see that they're going to take time, but they've got players who are capable now, Lloydy. Yeah. They have. They're better than what they're showing. Mm. Um, I spoke about last year, Collingwood, the lack of cohesion at Collingwood, Damo. Well, at the moment, there's just no cohesion at Essendon. So it's uh, the defence. They can't get the ball out. The forward line doesn't apply pressure. Here is on the weekend. And well done to Hawthorne. Let's give them credit for their pressure. They know with a guy like Sarge, you've got to put pressure on him. Goddard put pressure on Hurley. They did that, but... Um, they just do not know how to exit defence with teams who press up on them. And my, my worry for him, Damo, was you know the three big trades they brought in, yes. as well as um, free agency and all that stuff. I didn't think they addressed where I thought they were going to be at their weakest this year. Obviously, with Joe moving on and Heath Hocking, who was a blue-collar worker inside, they've got a lot of players which I refer to as second phase on ballers, so right. not the first possession get it. So, you know, Bell Chambers hits it down, who's going to receive yep. it? And you go through the names, Merritt, Heppel, Fantasia, Smith, Stringer, Saad, Parrish, Zakarakis, just to name them. They're all players you actually want to get the ball um, you know, off, after the handball. You want yep. them kicking, running into space. Who's going to, who are the first possession players there? And I don't, I don't think they identified that at the end of last year. Lord, who's most in the gun now and what you've seen out of the seven rounds? Well, they play Carlton this week. So John Worsfold may say, I'm going to give him one more chance to see against a, a side who hasn't won a game yet. But I'm really disappointed in Tip and Woody. I just don't think he looks fit, uh, whether he's carrying an injury. But I'd put him back to the VFL. just to, uh, for. And I look at Jake Stringer and he may say, we've only had 39 inside 50s. What chance have I got? But half the problem is they don't defend in their four front half to get repeat into. So Stringer must be under pressure and also Tip and Woody are, are you talking over. VFL for, yeah, for VFL both of them? possibly for this yeah. week, yeah. Okay. And on Danaher, well, I don't think John Worsfold's helped him either. He needed to give him that circuit breaker last week to put him in the ruck. I just saw them roll him out there again. Did nothing to try Is and help he a VFL option too? Uh, I'd not, I wouldn't think. Only if they feel if he wants to take 15 marks. But they're playing Carlton this week. Right. We've got to play him right in the AFL level this week. Okay. We've seen a, yeah. a new team this year. Yeah. We've seen a new Eagles. 2018. It's been refreshing. They've, they've improved within, but they've also added some real spark. Yeah, Willie Rioli, Petricelli. You say Waterman's been a, a great pickup out mm. of the draft as well. He's sort of that third tall, which a lot of sides look for because he's mobile. Takes a bit of pressure off Darling and Kennedy when he's missing as well. This is Petrocelli. He's got some serious speed. Cole stepped mm. up in the absence of Shuey, pinning mm. his hammy in the first three minutes. You know, did some really good grunt work, as we see inside here. So, as well as the revitalised senior mm. players, like Jack Redden has taken a while to find his feet at uh, the Eagles, but two really good games in a row. Well, the competition's crying out for some challenges, and uh, they've got to do it here in Melbourne, but uh, they couldn't do any more. As you said, top-end talent flying mm. and kids coming through. It's a real spark, isn't there? It? Is, yeah. It's not a word you're now using, or certainly out of uh, round seven, about the GWS, particularly their big man, John Patton, who was forced to go solo in, in the ruck roll, which he's not suited to, and this illustrated his nice by dropping this particular mark, as you can see, at a crucial stage of the game, and then moments later, the ball going down to the other end of the ground. And again, he's in the same contest here. And 
He's yeah. not really a part of it though. No, Corey Gregson, probably the world's smallest man. Uh, <laughs> he's a good friend, so I can say that to him. But when I, when I watch the game and as a, as a Cats supporter and seeing Patton start in the ruck, it completely throws their forward structure out. I know they've got a lot of injuries, but the question is, Dawson Simpson, mm. why, why didn't you play him yeah. if he's fit? You're spot on. Uh, they got it wrong there and got an injury crisis that they've got to look at the yeah. Giants. I want to ask you, Damo, yeah. Tom Hawkins, the big yeah. incident out of the weekend's game where he put his hand towards an umpire yeah. and the umpire was said, do not touch me, Tom. Uh, it's been referred straight to the tribunal. Yeah, and happens? so it should have been. Yeah. And you can't, as an organisation, preach the mantra, do not touch an umpire, and then refuse to act on it. And when I say refuse to act on it, he has to miss a game of footy mm. for that. And so, I, I don't uh, care what he says about it being an accident and out of character. Yes, it is. But you cannot keep saying to people, particularly at junior levels, mm. do not touch umpires. And then when the senior people do it in your competition structure, you don't act. He has to miss the game in my eyes. Just one week? One week. I agree with that one. What about you, Jim? Yeah, I, I keep flipping between a week and a fine, but yeah, you make a, a pretty good case there. Yeah. Okay, boundary umpire clash with Billy Gow. I say clash, I mean, he's just doing his job. But Billy Gow should have been paid this mark, I reckon, guys. You can you watch a replay of this in your own time, but he, he did appear to mark it. So he's fired up here. The ball then spills out of bounds, and he's uh, he finds himself on the boundary line. Now, we've highlighted the boundary umpire here. He's uh, done the right thing there. Called it, but then runs past Billy... Bang. <laughs> bang, bang. Didn't like it. Yeah, good technique there by the umpire. Tucked the arm in. Yeah. Oh, Billy Gow's a bit shocked. Now, there's nothing good about pigeons either, guys. Well, well unless nothing... you ask Bill Laurie. Well, I don't think they're, they're, they're oh. rats with wins at the best of times, and they've gotten the way of Brandon Matera here. Oh, oh. One, one of the great fake outs here by the pigeon. Oh, just start again, Brandon. Oh, he just pumped. Pump faked himself out of that. Everyone will ask, why didn't he go back? Look at the scoreboard, 53 to 10. They're crying out for a goal and they're run up. <laughs> Josh Kennedy stuff. Hey, Lotto, Jimmy, yeah. thank you. And thanks for joining us on Access All Areas. We'll see you next Monday. Goodbye.